Long Island? How's the pronunciation there? Long, <laughs> Long Island? Uh, it's set to take a direct hit from Hurricane Irene. Ellis Hennigan joins us now. He writes for the Long Island newspaper Newsday. And Ellis, by the way, is a former New Orleans native, a res resident, I should say. He's always going to be a, a New Orleans native. And he survived Hurricane Katrina. I think this has implications for the rest of the country because what it may happen on Long Island is going to be pretty traumatic, isn't it? Well, it, it is uh, for a number of reasons. I mean, one is that it really is the finger that sticks off the New York area here, been quite vulnerable out in the Atlantic there with the water on three sides and, and, and three million people. And many of those are the people, Stuart, that are the engines of the world that you pay most attention to, the financial world and the yeah. business world in New York. So many of those people actually live on Long Island. Uh, for the first time that I can remember, and I've lived around here for 35, 40 years, mm -hmm. they're actually ordering evacuations of people, some people on Long Island. That is right. We're just in the early stages of that. The folks who are right near the water, especially on the South Shore, which is the yep. most vulnerable. You can imagine those, uh, those sea surges coming across the beaches there. There's genuine concern about that. This that, that would be the Hamptons, wouldn't it? I mean, the Well, it, it does. As you go further out to the east, you include uh, some of the very, very richest beach real estate in the entire United States. So, yeah, uh, some fancy houses are going to get battered around. I, I, give me a sense of uh, the uniqueness of this. Because, again, I can't remember. That. I've lived in New York and the New York area for 30-odd years now, New York. Mm -hmm. I can't remember this before. Well, nothing quite on this scale. I mean, they right. have, across the centuries, been bad storms that have blown up the East Coast, as you know. But uh, nothing that has seems to be coming at us with quite this ferocity and with this combination of factors that just make us feeling a little nervous You're right in now. the news business. Are we perhaps being a little alarmist here? Are we? <coughs> <What> we? <coughs> well, <laughs> no, I mean, it's a serious yeah. question. I, I don't want to under alarm anybody if a, if a catastrophe mm -hmm. strikes, but at the same time, I don't want to go overboard and say, oh, oh the sky is falling. The world is ending. No, and it, it's a line, honestly, that over the next 48 hours, all of us have to be a little careful about how we walk. We do not want to tell people, hey, this is no big deal, don't worry about it, and then have something truly catastrophic happen. True. But, you know, I mean, these things are bad and having been through Katrina and some of the other uh, storms down on the, the Gulf South region of, uh, of my birth, you know, let me tell you, this stuff really can change the way you live if you don't pay proper attention to it. It has a huge economic impact and I go back to my premise that this pushes maybe us into recession. Big economic impact. I mean, think of all the people who live between North Carolina all the way up through the, the, the tip of, of Long Island and then off into New England, Massachusetts, mm -hmm. Cape Cod and all the rest of them. I say it's got a huge economic impact. I mean, Stu, you're, I think you're, under, me you're underestimating, you know, this might be the spark we need, you know, because guess what? This weekend, it won't be about left and right, about uh, liberals and, and, and conservatives. It's going to be about Americans perhaps saving each other and rebuilding. I don't know that it can All have right. a positive and, and impact. It's the coast, Stuart. It's not the entire inland that's going to get wiped away. All right, let's get to politics. I say that the <laughs> <laughs> All right, if I'm wrong, I I'm, I'm, know I'm right about politics. <laughs> <laughs> President Obama is going to say, look at all this damage. We've got to rebuild, we've got to repair, we've got to rescue. We've got to spend a ton of government money. That is an infrastructure plan, and it will be accepted. Which politician is going to say, oh, no, 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 we're not going to rebuild the eastern seaboard? You know, Stuart, the timing is notable. Why don't we just say that? It is, uh, it arrives you at a convenient me. moment. You agree with the president. Me. I think you're right. The president's going to get a spending plan, and it's going to be accepted. Well, you know, it's pretty hard to look at those uh, suffering sure. people and say, no, we're not going to help you. Oh, I'm not, I'm not suggesting for one I, moment no, that we say no that. One, no, Certainly not. Hold on, Stuart. No one was saying that uh, there shouldn't be uh, these kind of projects to begin with before the storm. I think it's how do you get the money out. We already know that seven, eight hundred billion dollars in stimulus didn't make it to shovel ready projects. So the argument would still be, why don't we give the money to the states mm -hmm. so that they can distribute it? Or, you know, let's do it in a smart way. Let's not just take this money and find a way to line the pockets of union workers. And if I may, why is it, why is it a sure thing, Stuart? I mean, th this is what insurance is for. People have insurance. There are insurance funds. There are catastrophe funds out there. The government or President Obama and his, you know, rebuilding plans don't have to come sweeping in. We do actually have things that are supposed to take care of this. Yeah, and, and you know, one of the lessons of Katrina, honestly, where government failed us at all levels, Republican, Democratic, local, state, and national, was that what really has rebuilt New Orleans and the Gulf South are individual efforts by individual people. College kids going down on spring break and yeah. church groups helping some old lady. Doctors going down. Right. 
all of that stuff is really what's worked in the end. Ellis Hennigan, everybody, the Long Island Republican. What? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm for self-help when it comes to my relatives. I tell and you friends. what, though, hey, back to Katrina, though, <laughs> a lot of people who have been on welfare for a long time still waiting for government help. You, you want to do a case study? Look at the Vietnamese community down in that area. They were the first to rebuild their own neighborhoods because they hadn't had generational welfare. They were just, you know what? We got to go out and do it ourselves. That's a success story. All, all right, Ellis, you better get back and uh, fix your relatives there on uh, Long Island. I'm going to okay. put my yellow slicker on and get out of here. <laughs>